Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, welcome to New York. For those of you for whom it is not home, uh, DNB Markets is very pleased to be partnering with Capital Link in hosting this. It's the 7th or the 8th. Nicholas and I were just discussing that. They've done it seven years, but they're transitioning to the New York Maritime Forum, which is, which is the title of this year's event. Uh, we've put together what we think is a very interesting and diverse program focused on an industry and a city that we love. Global shipping industry, as always, offers a wide range of both real challenges and real opportunities. New York City remains a global hub for the shipping and logistics sectors, offering a diverse range of high quality products and services to both. And of course, New York City is the heart of the largest and most liquid capital market in the world, the home to an ever-growing number of shipping companies who have chosen to list here. We certainly hope you will enjoy the presentations and panel discussions we've arranged for you, and at the end of the day feel that the time here has been informative and well spent. We're now, I think, officially back from summer. The, the tans are already beginning to fade, mine certainly is. Uh, and we're heading into a fall which I think offers the potential for a more conducive capital markets environment for our industry, but at the same time holds considerable uncertainty. I think the picture is quite different now than it was at the start of the year. Where are the signs of optimism? I actually think there are many. Overall continued growth in the world economy, continued accommodative monetary policy by the world's central bankers. Very importantly, a stabilization of the oil price, albeit at relatively lower levels. Major rallies in the other commodity sectors. We've seemingly overcome the initial shock of the Brexit vote. And although highly valued by historical standards, equities remain more attractive than fixed income, which remains, remains uh, a victim of the, of the, of, of the monetary policies of the, of, the, of the central bankers worldwide and negative spreads. We've all been reading about this now for some time. And investors are holding a relatively high percentage of cash. I would say the risk appetite has been on since late spring, early summer. We've seen rallies in the emerging markets. We've seen significant rallies in the energy sector globally, certainly in the US, on the equity side, on the investment grade side, and on the high yield side. M&A is beginning to uh, become a more, uh, a more common theme. Uh, a major announcement yesterday from Anadarko on an acquisition of assets in the US Gulf of Mexico, just the latest sign of that. And we see some continued life and rally in the, in the uh, MLP market, both the existing players, uh, Nice, nice rallies in their share prices during this year and, and uh, a new IPO in the market during this week. But as I said, I think headwinds do still remain. It does look now like the Fed will be tightening, that that is a more imminent factor. Equity markets do seem to remain most responsive to the latest Fed speak. We have an upcoming election here in the US I'm sure nobody's really read too much about that um, so far, but the next two months should be, should be quite interesting. We still have a great deal of political uncertainty and instability in Europe, and, and in my opinion, the Brexit negotiations are likely to be long and, and not at all easy. That will create ongoing uncertainty. And of course, predicting with any degree of certainty which direction the markets will take in the near term is, is, is of course, impossible. But from a shipping perspective, I think the following key elements are, are definitely in play. Vessel values are historically cheap, depending on the sector, ranging from historical lows, depressed values, to below long-term historical averages. Equity valuations in the public market remain under severe pressure. Generally speaking, financing markets and alternatives for shipping companies to raise financing remain highly constrained. Secondhand sale and purchase activity is at a relatively low level in no small part reflecting the stress financing conditions. New building ordering has more or less come to a halt in all sectors. And I think in, in many of, of the shipping sectors, we can expect the usual seasonal upturn. 
So for me, the current situation uh, in shipping is one that is ripe with opportunity for a selected group of companies with strong long-term track records of performance, with sound balance sheets, and with good access to debt and equity capital. Slowly but surely, the larger macro forces at work are driving consolidation in the industry into a shorter list of companies that will be the dominant players in the industry in the future. They may be public companies, they may be private companies. Each model, I believe, has its benefits and its drawbacks. And there will be owners who choose hybrid models using both public and private capital to further develop their activities. Now, and, and I, I believe that in the next six to 12 months, is the time for these companies to seriously consider deploying capital to acquire quality modern tonnage and solidify, solidify excuse me, their platforms for the future. The important thing in shipping is buying low. Um, that, that opportunity is readily at hand. Today you'll be hearing from a number of highly relevant and experienced players in our industry, companies, financiers, analysts, brokers, and others, who will be speaking to the issues that are relevant to the outlook for the sector and their views on that. I trust that there will be much you will find of interest in what they say. Uh, I thank you for your attention, and now let's get the blood flowing with our dry bulk panel. I'll introduce Nikolai Divik, uh, DNB Markets Shipping Equity Analyst, who will be moderating the dry bulk panel. Thank you again.